gonna open up Creator Suite while this goes through. Do you guys know the uh, leash timers? Uh, the what? Sorry. Uh, when you stop leashing. I don't know if you even have to leash this game. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, I didn't know that. Uh, I didn't know that there was like a timer for it. Yeah, it's 149. Oh, okay. So that's the time they should like pretty much always just stop. Oh, I didn't know that. What? Yeah. Um, that way you'll never miss a creep. Ever. Okay. Nice. Unless you guys get like bush cheesed or something. Yeah. But that's obviously out of the ordinary, so. Okay. So the primary focus of this is going to be laning phase. Like we identified earlier. I'm going to disable vision. You guys obviously knows what hap know what happens, but I do not. But yeah, so if she starts here, 149 is the least time you stop on this buff. On here, I think it's like 143. I don't know this timer though. Okay, so you choose to push. Why do you choose to push? Yeah. Um... Because uh, I don't want to be pushed uh, under tower by Caitlyn. She she just fucked me with Lulu. Yeah. So that that is a good answer. Um, in this is a scrim though. So um, if you guys are going to push, you guys need to identify before the game that you're going to push. So what does that mean? That means your mid laner and your jungler have to get a ward here. Because then you know if you can push or not. Oh. Be because if your mid laner or your jungler walk here and they drop a ward here, then this will catch all of this, right? Right before the game yeah. starts. So at like 1... Um, your mid laner could walk here at like 137, or you guys could go here at like way earlier than that even. Um, like, Does this apply to solo queue? Too? No, okay. not for solo queue. Well, yes for solo queue, but no, because nobody's going to do it. But it should apply. Um, so th this should be warded at like 59 seconds because then you will know if they start here because if we look at jungle pathing um, it'll determine if you can push or not because it makes sense that if he starts here he's only going to go here and then he has the option of like doing this or he can go like this and like this so this path again this will be around 3 minutes he'll get blue buff this path same thing about 3 minutes um, because you can see it's roughly the same distance, um, except one leaves you super prone and one doesn't. The alternate path is he goes like this, then like this, um, then over here, and then like scuttle, because he doesn't have red buff early, so he doesn't have the regen, and then this will be about three minutes again. So you see the two different paths and how they're vastly different, because yeah. one... They end up on top side over here. And then the other, they end up on bottom side. Over here. Okay. So in team play, um, you, these two, and I guess your top laner as well, need to decide who is the safest toward this. Um, because if you don't have this information, it's it's like really greedy to not, or sorry, to push. Because you don't know where their jungle is going to be. Now this changes on blue side. Because, um, <clears throat> because on blue side, most everyone's going to start here or here, and then the eventual path is up here, up here. Yeah. Like, if you if you die to, like, a blue side, um, like, weird-ass gank like this, like, you shouldn't feel bad about it. Because, like, okay. that's a cheese path. But the standard path for a jungler on red side will be either bottom lane or top lane. You don't you don't know. Um okay. So does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um and then the other way to guarantee a push other than this is you you actually almost never want to do this. 
you want to instead um, hit these and like hit these and don't kill them because you're pushing it too hard by doing this okay, okay. Um, so if we <clears throat> go back in lane I'm sorry I didn't get water <clears throat> um, I'll be able to explain why that is so melee minions are the quote-unquote tanks right and then these are like DPS. Right? That makes sense? Yeah. So if if you kill the tanks, that means your minions move on to the DPS. And then these, they're not healthy, so they're just going to die. And then your wave's going to be pushed and it's going to be caught here. If instead you auto attack these two to three times each, the back line, you will continue the DPS here. And these will be eating... Pretty much the wave will push evenly. Like, because you're not actually getting rid of any DPS. Because this will still be doing 36 uh, damage per second. But if you kill these, it won't be doing 36 damage per second for the entire time. So pretty much killing these, push, uh, killing these ones, just pushes it too hard. So instead, you want to, it's called prepping the back, um, the back line. So you just want to prep it. Because now they get all his experience right here. See, they catch all six of these. But if instead you prep the back line, one of the melees might actually die before they get in the experience range. And your wave isn't either caught here, depending on how hard you can push, or in their turret, which will then bounce back. And then you actually lose the experience push if you push too hard. Rakan usually starts W um, to threaten an all-in on lanes like this, especially when you're something like Draven. Um, okay. I didn't mention that earlier, just consider it. And then against their team comp, you're probably going to want Exhaust instead of Ignite on Rakan, especially because your mid laner um, took Ignite. So just oh, okay. for the future. Yep. Probably. I mean, obviously, if you guys discuss a game plan like um, to cheese bottom lane, I don't know, but that's usually a thing. Okay, so you get some good trades here. Yeah, that was a bad W by me. Then that was a, yeah, the W, so. Um, okay, so I'll show you where you need to stop this trade. And you recognize it by saying, we already won, let's take the advantage. So you get an auto here. Okay, cool. She steps back in, you get another auto. At this point, this axe is lost, and you just say, I just got two free autos. Because look at her health bar. Right. Um, sorry, I drew that a little poorly. Like, you just did a lot of damage to her for free. So just drop this axe and say, I'm happy with that lane advantage that I just created. Um, but instead, I'm going to show you the health differentials now. You were at 484, um, and she was at 474. After this trade, so I'm going to rewind it really quick to get back here. Okay, so at this point, this was the health value I was looking for. 513. To her very similar value of 563. Oh, no, the auto didn't hit yet. 469. These were the health values that you had, and you just created an advantage of an auto attack, basically, due to the, like, the minion damage you just tanked. Um, but that's fine. But then, if you look at the health values after the trade... Your support gets chunked, and you get chunked. Ooh, yeah. Okay, oh, and one more. I got pretty greedy, actually. So, you see, now it goes to 185 and 162. But we didn't take into account supports. So their support is still full health. Your support is 350 health. To her... Um, 556 and she's ranged so that's super 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 big I don't know why that keeps coming up 
um, because their effective health is way larger than yours and she can zone you guys out now. So if you saw, this is a, you guys won this, but now you guys yeah. lost this. And I, I presume that if LeBlanc teleports on you guys, now you guys are dead 100% like you said. But if you guys have this health advantage, then it's not necessarily the case. Okay. All right. So pretty much the point of that was take your micro advantages. Don't be greedy and try to overextend things. Did you start shield? You should probably be starting shield. Oh, I wasn't too sure about starting shield. Yeah, so pretty much the math comes down to like Doran's shield is like always better. <laughs> um, oh, I didn't write shield. Doran's shield is almost always better because when you guys are taking these short trades in bottom lane, you will win out. The only time you take Doran's blade is if you're literally going for a level two all in. Because Doran's Blade outperforms Doran's Shield in the all-in, but in any other case, it's better to start Doran's Shield. Yeah. Um, and then I honestly don't know the math behind the Longsword 3, so you may be correct in that sense, but I don't know, and I'm pretty sure Doran's Shield out-sustains Longsword 3. Pretty sure. Just for future reference. I think there's a way you kill both of them here. And I have to check if your W's on cooldown. No, it's not. Okay, so at this point, if you're the initiator here or here, um, ideally here in this circle, uh, it's a little bit longer than that. Ideally like this, you will kill both of them. Okay. Your target goal is to be hitting Kaylin because Lulu like matters but this mini wave is going to protect her here from this Elise stun. Um, so you shouldn't be looking on her because you guys can't chain CC her necessarily. If you hit her at this point, you can. But if you don't hit her, like, literally on this point, this minion is going to come here and she'll, like, keep moving like this and then, you know. Um, but if Kaylin's caught, Lulu is going to stay because she's going to try to help her. If you catch Lulu, she's, like, further back, right? But Caitlyn's just going to keep running. She's not going to try to stay to help the Lulu. Does that kind of make sense, how that, like, works? Because her job is to protect Caitlyn. It's not Caitlyn's job to protect Lulu. You know, it doesn't work that way. Um, and you're the easier-to-hit ability. AoE, super easy to hit. So you should be aiming for the engage, not the um, the harder one. Because if you go like this and then W, like let's say like this, right? It's a little bit shorter than that. Like this. You have a chance to hit both of them. But the point is, it's going to hit or she's going to walk this way. And it'll create negative distance for her. It, it just makes it easier for you guys. Um, and if they flash your W, that's fine. Because now Elise has a guaranteed hit. Does that make sense, that order? Yes, yes. It does. Okay, cool. And if you hit her, Draven's right here, you know, you get, you guys win. Um, and you guys don't have to chase so far into minions and tank all that. Okay. Why are you CSing? Do you know? push the wave in I think can you push this wave in no there's another wave another wave coming now I think yeah so I should have just back um yeah pretty much do you know the amount of time it takes to get here and here uh, I think about 30 seconds this is 25 seconds this is 30 seconds with uh, tier 1 boots. 
And then with tier two boots, it is 24 seconds. Or sorry, without tier one boots. That is regular. With tier one is 24, 29, and then it goes down to 23 and 28 if you get tier two. Every tier of boots shaves down a second. Um, just some cool numbers to know because if you base here, before you're hitting all this, like literally just immediately walk into this push and base, you will catch all of his experience. She will miss this wave and she will miss the next wave. And how do you recognize that? You say, holy shit, look at this. They have one, two, three, four, five, six casters with six. Okay, so you can literally stop them from playing the game at this point. Like, actually. You, you Like, if you base now, you just win the game. Or you win bottom lane 100% time. Because Kaelin has no flash. Kaelin has no heal. She can't extend. Lulu has no exhaust. What are the... What are they going to do when you have the wave frozen right here with four to five to six casters? Nothing. Um, the math behind it is you take number of casters minus one, and this is the amount of waves you can freeze for. And if you have four plus casters, you can freeze indefinitely. Uh... I don't know how to spell indefinitely, to be completely honest. So I'm going to switch <laughs> that word. Forever. <laughs> um, because just the way the minions work is if you have four casters, you will always out damage the enemy wave, no matter what lane position it is. So the wave could be here, and it's still going to push if you have four, ca four more casters than they do. Um, so yeah, ideally what would happen is Draven would base... Rakan would stand here, tank this, pull it over here, and then as the next mini waves come in, then you, you let that go. But Rakan should be staying to tank to make sure that the wave doesn't bounce, and then you guys win bottom lane. Because it'll be stuck here with six casters, and then you guys stand here. What, what are they going to do right now? Your effective zone range is like this. They have to stand like all the way back here, and that is missing all this experience. Super, super important um, to make sure that you're abusing advantages like that because if, like, from what I see the lane position right now, I don't see how you guys can ever lose bottom lane if you guys play it properly. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. like, But it's a learning experience, right? The key word there was if you played it properly, but staying here is not pr playing it properly. So so now you actually lose it. You should lose this lane hundred percent of the time. Ah oh, fuck! Because of the way you manage this wave. Because look, they have four casters on you and two melees. They can do that exact same thing to you that I just described for the next few waves. Obviously. You guys might be a little bit stronger than them, so you might be able to force them down. But look, the gold differential is 400 gold. Like, what? Like your extra longsword is not going to be able to compete with a freeze if they're doing it properly. And this loses the monkey. This is awful. <laughs> and if this Kalen pushes it, I'm going to be super upset. No! What?! <laughs> Wait, what elo are they? <laughs> what elo are they? Do you remember? Diamond, Diamond 4. Oh my Jesus. <laughs> Alright, so so what did you buy? Um, I think I bought... Yeah. Long Swords, Potion, Control Ward. Wait, why does Rakan have uh, this item? The, the yellow item. Uh, which one should I go? The blue one? I think he always does blue. I I see. The thing is, I see it mixed up like um, from different people. I see people going coin. I see people going uh, the frost fang thing. So I, I wasn't quite sure. And I just took that one for, uh, I don't know. I just, yeah. Really? I'm just not sure what to do. And I, th I thought okay. with the coin, I would have better engaged later with the movement speed and stuff. 
Okay, so I don't have the math on it, but from the pros that I saw, I saw blue. So we there might just be a disparity. Um, so um, I'll have to look at some analysts to see if they've done any work on the blue versus yellow with Rakan. Um, okay. But keep that in mind for the future if you're gonna play more Rakan. You might, it might be yeah. blue that you might need. Um, uh, I mean, I even I think I took the wrong Keystone Mastery there as well. What did you take? Uh, I took the Wind Speakers one, and I think people go Colossus on him. Yeah, people go Colossus. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh no, not that one. No. Okay. Um, small small point about this ward. Um, place it up here. And mm -hmm. do you see all this downtime? Well, actually, let's count this downtime. So you're back in the lane at 445. Okay. Let's see how long you sit here. You're ap approaching 20 seconds of sitting here. Okay. So being patient is fine. But with those 20 seconds, what you could have done was placed your ward here, like this. And then you would still be here at this same exact time because it takes roughly um, like eight seconds to travel this distance. So you see that would be like roughly, you know, 16 seconds. Um, you would get the ward here, which would then, uh, I need to move my camera actually. If you get this ward, you protect your mid laner from this entire bottom side because you're also going to ward this as a support player. And now you have the entire vision warded. Uh, sorry, the entire bottom river. So their jungler and their mid laner cannot gank you if you ward this. And, like It's impossible. Actually impossible. Because you will catch up to here. You obviously get all this. All this. You get all this. And like that. So the only way they gank you is if they have a blast plant. Um, and that's it. And then what this means, if you get these wards, um, your jungler doesn't have to be bottom side ever. And that means your mid laner can ward this or this or this with a pink ward or control ward. And your jungler can control this or this or this. Pretty much the point is, your jungler and your mid laner can control top side while you control bottom lane alone instead of pinking okay. this. All right. And then that just creates more map pressure because your um, Nautilus doesn't have to be so afraid of the Renekton anymore because he will clearly get 2v1. Like, he can, uh, and he will, he will die in that scenario. But if you protect him with wards, or rather your top side protects him with wards, that's okay. Um, and he won't be able to them because you'll see it long before it happens and you can call resources or you can give it up. Um, but that only happens if you can do this because now your jungler and your mid laner should be pinking this or this or this because they have to protect you guys because just the way that the lanes work, obviously it's, you know, um, one, one, two, right? And then we'll throw like one here for the jungler. So you can see there's there's weighted gold on the bottom side of the map of three people. Versus two people. So people tend to be focusing bottom, especially in the early game, because of dragon. So if you control it, your jungle doesn't have to, then you get topside, and then not having vision is also vision. Because if this is warded up here, let's say this is this is uh, pink war control warded, and this is a control warded, and then... This is yellow warded. How does anybody on, on, on your team die? Do you know? Because it's impossible. The only answer is you're bad. If you die. If you have these three wards. Because this will cover this and this. This will cover, obviously, all of this. Even into here a little bit. And then this. This covers this, this... Okay, you can even peek into here again. 
So the only camp that's unwarded is this camp. And this path would require him to only go like this before you can spot him. Any other path, he catches him. So therefore, your top laner should literally never die. And then, if you don't see Kha'Zix in here, where do you think he is? Yeah. It means he's bottom yeah. side. Yeah. So, so that means if you guys die, well, because you know he's bottom side, it's it's your fault. Because you should, one, have this warded. And if you don't have this warded, you can just assume that he's bottom. You don't even need to ward it because you should know that he's bottom. Because the only camps that aren't covered are this, 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 and Krugs. Um, so that's just a quick tip on vision right there. That's kind of unlucky. Yeah, but I should have flashed the chain there anyway. Yeah, so I think this engage was great. I think it sucked that you got teleported on. But when you're getting teleported on, walk this way. Um, create the maximum distance possible from it. So if you rewind it where it's actually in focus. Um, see, at this point, your path needs to be like this. And like this. Because if you guys walk on this path, or this path and this path you see how leblanc is literally just gonna walk like this and cut you guys off like literally anywhere yeah um well if you walk this way you're creating distance before she's near you and she has to use her w aggressively then which then forces her to hit her, hit her e because if she doesn't hit her e she does no damage to you um and then that's chasing into your jungle which isn't risky right now because they see your team topside but she has to chase into your jungle like a long way into your jungle so even if she does like you know chase literally all the way back here she's losing a lot which would then allow your mid laner to get ahead and that's a super snowball matchup um so small padding thing but pretty big uh could have changed the game outcome or like the lane outcome I also heal. Yeah. Um, I was ignoring the summoners, but you use your summoners. That is what they're used for. This is a good ward to get now. Um, when you see LeBlanc stay, you probably can't stay the second Lulu comes back. Yep. Okay. So, I want to discuss really quick that that lane thing again. Because if you guys manage that wave, the wave isn't here. The wave's over here. You guys can't get ganked. LeBlanc doesn't teleport on you. Really big thing. Just, again, to re-highlight it, because look at this wave position. That's why stuff like this happens. Um, I know it's a little bit um, behind it now, but the wave position is effectively the same thing. Because, see, um, because it's here and not here. Not a lot of units, but really, really, really important. So, uh, your bottom lane turret goes down. Oh, it doesn't. Yeah, it should go down. Yeah, they should. Oh, they use double teleports. Okay. I'm sure if I die here again. So what were comms like at this point? Do you remember? I don't actually. Snack, do you remember? Uh, not, not exactly. In general, was it like positive, negative? Were you, I guess more between you guys or like not even the rest of the team? Like what were you guys thinking, feeling, if you guys remember? Um, oh my god, I... Wait, we only played this game two days ago. Uh, I think we wanted to not fight them anymore before being level six, but I'm I really am not that sure right now. Okay. Um, do you guys know where you should be on the map now? Bot lane still maybe. Probably rotating. Well, it's not maybe, like, where should you be now? Where do you think is the answer? Or the question? Uh, 
What do you think, Snack? I don't know. I, I just see that uh, mid is pushing right now really hard, and uh, we might have rotated top lane, but I, I really don't know. We might, might have uh, lane swap. Okay, do you know why you lane swap? Uh, well, I mean, normally we should get turret first to lane swap after, but I think at that point, if the turret falls that low, it would be better, I think. So Nautilus, I think he can keep up with these two because he's tanky and stuff. And we could have had an easy, easier lane for a Draven to farm up. Yeah. Okay, so but the answer I, I is know. the answer is you don't lane swap. I was just okay. posing the question that way to see what you guys thought about lane swapping okay. um, and map rotations. So you you lane swap for two reasons. One, you win bottom really hard. Um, because then you translate leads. Yeah. Or because they rotate. So then you have to rotate. These both come with conditionals. So remember how I um, outlined the map again where, you know, there's one, 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 two, or one, 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 two, sorry. Um, do you know why the lanes are positioned like this? Okay, so that is to guarantee two carries with solo experience and gold. Further, it's because if you look at the way the map is laid out, um, which side matters more early? Well, bottom lane has no fortification. And dragon. Especially because this is an infernal, apparently. Is it? That's what uh, the map yeah, says. Okay. Because sometimes there's a bug with that, so I wasn't sure. Um, but if this is truly infernal, you should never rotate out of this. And yeah. it's because you want one here, one here, two down here, because you want pressure around this. This is so important that you can't swap out. Because if your bottom lane goes here, um, and it's two, one, one one they can just say okay screw top i'm not going to get anything over here i'm going to trade turret and then i'm going to get infernal because this is an eight percent bonus damage to the entire team and if you look at the amount of gold that is that's like roughly 350 gold per person it's pretty much giving a long sword to every single person on your team or an ampitome so you can see why this would be so important because it's it's a, literally a whole item and it scales multiplicatively throughout the game. Um, but even if this isn't Infernal, unless it's like Wind, this would be like the only time you would probably swap. And you need Draven to free farm to win the game. But you have an Ari, you have an Elise, wherever she is. So Draven doesn't need to win the game for you guys. So if you look at your win conditions, it's okay and makes sense to stay down bottom lane. Um, do you guys have questions about why you'd rotate out, or did I clearly explain that? No, it's, it's fine for me. Snack, do you? I answered. Oh, sorry, <laughs> trash, my bad. <laughs> I'll take that as a no. Wait, what? Oh, <laughs> you were asking me? Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you have a question yeah, as, yeah, to, yeah. as to why you would swap out? I understood. Okay, cool. Um, pretty important concept, so that's why I'm, I'm just making sure, like, the things that I cover, I'm trying not to be stupid and say, like, oh, like, you know, do this, because, like, I know you know how to, how to use your flash and your heal. So I'm trying to cover the more advanced topics, so I'm just going to keep on asking, like, did you understand that? Do you have questions? Um, because they're, um, you know, sometimes they're harder to grasp. And then now your top laner has teleport. So that's another reason why um, you wouldn't want him to swap. Or rather, he should have teleport. I don't know. The spectator might be bugged because I paused it again. Let's see. Yeah, he does. So now you can try to punish the Renekton not having teleport. Because he shouldn't have it. Oh, maybe it's bugged again. I hate that bug.
The only other thing I saw with warding was that uh, you guys didn't use wards early in the game um, to secure either bush because you didn't need it or like out here really. So try to get those. Um, and then this ward is overall pretty bad. Why, why did you ward this? Do you remember? Uh, I think just to... Actually, I think that was a stupid reason. I think I only wanted to see if the plant was up or not. Because Kha'Zix was there, I didn't want him to, like... I think we were pushing there again, mm -hmm. for whatever reason. And I didn't want him to engage uh, on us with it. Okay, so the only reason you wore that was exactly like you said. To... Well, actually, there's two reasons. It's to check the plant, and then to, pre to prevent this path, and then, like, a Kha'Zix E or the wall, right? But yeah. ag against this lane, as long as the wave isn't in their turret, if Kha'Zix jumps this wall, he can't kill you guys. Um, so you don't need to ward this, and I know you want to see if there's a plan here, but you sh you just get it later, or like you check later, or you have your jungler go check, because okay. you having this ward here, what what has it seen so far? You guys nothing. were basing anyway. Yeah, so it sees nothing. So instead, you ward either this here, or this here. Okay. They're different, um, because this ward gives you more vision like this, and will catch dragon. Like, you would see them doing dragon right now. If you had that warded. Um, if you ward this one, up here, you'll catch this entire path. Whereas this one, the yellow one, doesn't necessarily have the chance of catching that path. Or, like, there's a chance that it doesn't catch the path. Doesn't catch the path. Okay, so we're constantly roaming now, which he is. You get the Draven Solo experience because the support level doesn't matter in competitive play. Like, you know, it does. Well, you were out of lane. Look, he just soaked all that solo experience. Even if you're not yeah. getting a kill. The only level you care about is 6. Really. I mean, like, that's about it. I think I took two shower, tower shots there as well, because I walked up to the castle minions. Yeah. Oh, even three. Oh, yeah. okay, so... So you just took three shots, um, yeah. which makes this dive significantly harder. And used your W. So small micro thing. Just make sure you respect that and don't do it. Yeah, that was a mistake for me. I thought the um, melee minions were already in tower range, but unfortunately they were not so... But yeah, so if you're healthy there, I think you guys can do that dive. Because you guys had vision on um, um, LeBlanc. Yeah. So that that was a good thing, just that, that mistake, unfortunately, um, kind of hurt you. Yeah, but I think we... Was it there? I think we still go for it. But it might be later as well. Okay, so there's one more mini wave to look at before we check CS numbers. Do you know what perfect CS is at uh, 10 minutes? It's it's 96. Um, that that that's like pretty much perfect. Okay. Um, so let's talk about this issue first. You're, lo you're level 5, so I just said levels don't matter, but you have to respect that you're level 5. Like, that's just something you have yeah. to know as you're playing support. Is like, hey, I'm under level at this point. Um, because, like, really, this Renekton, he should be able to 2v1 you guys as long as he's, like, nearest turret. Because he can literally just jump on you, and then you die. Like, for the most part. Um, yeah. Because he's level 7. Or, sorry, level 8. And every level is, like, five to 600... Gold worth of stats. So if you look at it now, like he's up 1,800 gold or 1,500 gold, um, you, you would probably never make this mistake again, right? Because like, this is a lot of gold. This is literally, imagine him having like pretty much a BF sword and a, and a long sword over you. That's what you need to look at it as. Okay. Um... Driven trades well with it though, so you guys don't get punished, I don't think, immediately. 
Those turret shots probably weren't were necessary. I know you wanted to get a hard push, but I don't think it mattered that much. Okay. So at this point, can you guys be here safely? So you know we don't have vision on the mid and the jungler there. Yeah. So I don't know again what the comms are like because we don't have the comms. But what I do know is your mid laner is based, your jungler is dead, their mid lane is pushed up, and you guys don't have vision of this. That would be scary, actually. So, oh, and they have a blast cone. Yeah. Which yeah, that is the support's cool. job to identify if it's there or not. So you should just like literally be checking it. Um, yeah. Like, you know, you don't have to walk here and ward it necessarily, but you'll be able to see it through Fog of War um, if you get vision, like, of the area at all. Uh, I think we actually back there. Okay. Or at least we, we move back. But still, look where you guys are right now. It doesn't matter yeah. that you do back. It matters where you are right now. Because yeah. let's say they're already on the rotation. Because if they're already here, you're dead. Like, 100% of the time. And, what well, you probably get, like, one auto on this turret or something. Does that auto matter for this risk? That's what you have to ask yourself pretty much when t playing this game. Is is the risk worth the reward? The answer is no for this case. Unless, like, your team identified, hey, they're back or something, something, something. Now, he showed top. But, like, we didn't see, we didn't have that information. Yeah. Um, and then I did want to look at the CS numbers. I did miss that really quick. Um... So you got 68. So that is roughly 7 CS at 10 minutes. Or sorry, 7 CS per minute. So this should be between uh, really 80 to 90 in a uh, competitive type game. Because you're not looking to make solo kills in lane, basically, because when you're playing as a team, solo kills, like, don't happen. You know, t like, if you're watching the TSM game that actually just happened, uh, you know... Uh, what's his name? Biofrost died in lane. I was yeah. like, uh, that was interesting, right? But, like, that shouldn't be happening. Um, you pretty much want to die, or rather, you want to get a kill by working with your team. So you call, you build a slow push, and then you call your jungler to come like this, and then you dive, or, you know, you, you freeze the lane, and then you call your jungler, or you... Do whatever, whatever, whatever. You incorporate your jungler, your mid laner, your top lane teleport. You fight around an objective. You do something. But lane kills should not happen. So your goal, like, even, I know you're playing Draven and you're a Draven main. But, like, your goal needs to shift from I need to kill my lane to I need to work with my team. Uh, because that, that's what it will end up being. And if you have that in mind, your CS will go up because you'll be managing the wave in different ways. Because you're not just going to be AFK pushing, or you're not going to be doing whatever, whatever, whatever. You're going to be thinking about it actively, and then doing things to work with your team instead of saying, "Hey, I need to kill these guys," or "I need to take that turret." I think you've used your W to get away like four times already. Um, you want to be using that aggressively. Um, like obviously you will need to use it defensively, but if you have to use it defensively, you're probably not positioning properly. That was pretty good. The only thing that I would say is that if the gank, or rather the teleport, looks unteleportable, you know, like um, he's teleporting here and they're like already here, call it off. So like you guys got something here and it matters, right? Because you got Draven, all that gold. But um, as a team setting, if he, if it, if he doesn't want to burn his flash or it looks like you can't get it, just call it off. Like, don't have him teleport here was the point because, like, I wasn't expecting that flash hook. Okay. Um, 
and I'm just offering an alternative thing because like what this play worked but as another option you could have not and canceled the teleport because now you guys have a teleport differential and blah 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 but um it, it's it's fine play like it, it works and it's good that kind of more like a, a note. What'd you say? No, no, it's fine, it's fine. Draven wants his solo gold, so I hope you guys give that to him. Okay, so yeah, Snake, you shouldn't be here. Um, you getting this gold, like you're Rakan. Like, it, it literally doesn't matter if you have gold. Um, okay. You Your purpose is the 2.5 seconds of CC um, on a target and you getting tankier doesn't matter because you're still going to get this 2.5 seconds no matter how tanky you are um because your w is a flat one second cooldown and then your r scales up to 1.5 seconds um so you need to be back here and you need to give draven the solar gold because he needs the damage you don't you don't need the tankiness okay okay it, no you still caught some it looked like maybe you didn't though but either way just be safer next time with that. In solo queue, like, you can take it, but, like, you know, in, in team play, when you're working with your team members, like, you don't want to. Okay, so, I like this rotation. Um, it, it's good, because Ari can wave clear mid, and you guys are now pressuring around Rift Herald, so that's good. The only thing is, um, their top laner has teleport before your top laner does, so it's just something that you have to consider. If he, if he chooses to go bottom, which for some reason he's not. Because he should be bottom. Okay, so now you guys are answering mid. That's good. Okay. So there's going to be less points. Oh, go ahead. Were you saying something? Oh no, I, I think uh, that should be where uh, we are team fighting, I guess. Yeah. That should, yeah, team fight should happen right now. Okay, so we're gonna be looking like more on like micro mistakes um, now, just, and like kind of like speeding it through, like because our purpose isn't to talk about um, the team play or anything like that. So, what questions or comments or like, do you feel I didn't go over something or um, pretty much? Do you have anything you want to talk about before we get into the team fight stuff? Um. Yeah, maybe one thing, um, like especially when we we lost the turret and we were a little bit pressure bottling there. Okay. Um, is there any safe pathing I can take to board their jungle and stuff like that when we get out pressure that hard? Um, I mean, we well, weren't getting, the, I think they backed, but still. Well, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, so. The, the point is you do this stuff before you get in this case because once you're in the negative it's hard to then come back yeah um so for wave manipulation you should look at it as warding like it like if you can wave manage properly you don't need to ward or you do need to ward but you have the timing and the opportunity to do so um so fix this wave manipulation mistake here and then now you have all the free time in the world to go up here if you need to while they're based and over here or um you don't need to ward because you're going to be soaking this experience and your mid laner will be able to get this ward here. I, haven't, I don't think your mid laner is warded yet, to be honest. I haven't been keeping tabs on him, but I've been looking at the map and I haven't seen war too many bottom side wards, um, which were needed. So let me go ahead and look through really quick if there was a time where you could have warded. Other than you sitting at that turret, or sorry, sitting in the bush, like I said, that was a really good time that you could have been warding, but okay. that would have already been timed out by now. Um... Do we know that they're based? No. Do we know now? Yes. How do we know now? Well, they're not here. So that means they're based. So at this point, you could have dropped a ward here, which is right where Kha'Zix is. You could have walked like this and dropped a ward. But Kha'Zix is here. So now you know he's here. Um... I don't think you have a ward anymore, do you? Uh, I don't think so. I'm not sure. No, you don't. Um, so I'll, I'll keep tabs. But you could have warded 
either this or this at this like with, with this ward and it's about to you know it's already like almost timed out um let's see So you chose to go boots, so you don't have the earlier sight stone. So yeah, you have a. Uh, I was rushing mobility boots there. Yeah. I'm not sure which is a better call. Honestly, I can't speak to that one in this game. Uh, I was um, with Rakan. Like, uh, what I was thinking was that uh, I think it's uh, it's worse for like getting vision, but it's better to force team fights because my movement speed with my ult then. I could get uh, faster to the enemies. I think the answer is Sightstone in this game because you can't really roam mid and kill their mid laner like easily. And if Kha'Zix and LeBlanc snowball, you guys could lose. Okay. Um, but it, let's say their mid laner is like Orianna and their jungler is like, I don't know, somebody lower pressure. Um, I'm trying to think of a low pressure jungler right now and I can't really think... <laughs> think of one but if they have a lower pressure jungler and their mid laner has no um escape then yeah then mobility groups boots are great because then you can really try to force stuff around level five six seven eight nine um as your first item but like come level nine anyway you'll have both items so if you buy mobi boots it's pretty much to get the deeper vision early and then to also try to gank the mid lane because that's like why you get the mobi boots because otherwise, like, Sightstone's pretty much just better. And I think in this game, with their two assassins and really snowball team comp, I think that the, the Sightstone's probably better. Okay. Um, because because if you had the Sightstone, like, you won't have it now, but, like, next base, you would be able to get, like, oh, this or, like, this. But it looks, I think next base, it's, you guys are, like, topside anyway. So, like, you'd be able to, like, cover here and maybe just obtain some more vision. Um... Do you have another opportunity to ward? Well, your ward's up now, but you chose a safe ward because we saw them on the map. I'm trying to see if you had a good opportunity to ward, because I don't think you did. Like, another opportunity. Because of ward timers. Um... So your ward's about to be up. Um... But now you guys are basing. You're too low to go ward. So the answer to your question is no. I don't think there was a better time you could have warded in this specific game. But if you fix the errors that I said, or like I said earlier, then you would have a better chance to ward. Um, you know, because the waves would be different and everything like that. Yep. Okay. Okay, so this is where we were. What's a good dodge? Do you have flash? No, you don't. Okay. No, because... I, yeah, I, I still get like three or four of them. This is a... That's a really good engage. I was actually yeah, just going to say that. Didn't I die there? If, if, you, if you die, that's fine. Because... Um, the point of it was to get the engage. Okay, so I don't think you need to go in there. Um, and that's just... That oh, go ahead. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, Lee's oh. died there. She saved you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is, it, is that the right call? No. No. Rakan should have died here. Um, how do I oh, look at that? She should have just sacrificed my life there because I was way lower before. I think he healed me with it. Yeah, so Rakan should be the one to die 
because you have to look at it as we made the mistake. Somebody has to die. Okay. Um. So we're kind to be the one to die because if you look at who was on a killing spree, Draven has excess gold, uh, or excess like gold value on him because of his kills and assist. Rakan has less gold value on him because he's already died yeah. once, and Elise has the most gold value. So you don't want to give them the extra gold value. So yeah. So it's 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 worth for me to die there instead of my team maybe dying. Yes, because it, like if you die, like nothing really happens, and if you live, like again, you, you're not gonna be able to find a push. You're not gonna be able to do anything. Like you, you know. Yeah. Um. So you should be the one to die there. Okay. I know it sucks to look at it as like, oh, well, somebody has to die, it has to be me, but like, that is the most productive for your team. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. I just uh, needed to know if that's, if, if it's actually worth it or not. Yeah, definitely. After you make the mistake, of course, like, don't die for free. So the first yeah. thing was, don't dash in like that, because like, it was pretty greedy. Um, you, because you guys pretty much like overstayed as a team, right? Like, okay, see, so you got this here. You guys basically got this, but like, it's literally one hit you can go claim at any time. And, like, you getting something extra, like, you already got a lot off of that. You got a huge team fight, and you got a turret, and almost a second turret. Just be happy. Just say, yeah, I got all that. It's the same thing that happened down here, right? You got those two free autos. You should be like, yes, I got two free autos. Not like, hey, I'm going to kill them now. Do you rush redemption? Um, I think I did, yes. Okay. You should be rushing locket or redemption, and I think redemption's better. Wow, Draven is really satisfying to listen to on two times. <laughs> okay, so we see him on the map, it's 2v3. Okay. So, I have criticism here. That went pretty fast, so I'll just leave it down. I'm ready to speed. Um, so, if you taunt Renekton, what happens? Uh, I don't have it up for other engages. Yeah. He's not the target you want to taunt. And yeah. Elise is going to die. Like... You can't save her. She like she is going to die. Yeah, um, I wasn't. Um, I hadn't checked the summoner, so I wasn't sure if she had flash or not. So. Okay. Um, I was actually just. I wanted to give her like a moment to flash out, but after that, I saw that she didn't have flash up. Just bad by me. So that should be a communication thing right there, where like Elise should be saying, "I don't have flash," or "I'm dead." Like Elise needs to clearly say, "I'm dead." I don't know if that communication is happening on the team, but like, don't look at it like. Wow, I just let my team down. You need to say, look, team, I'm dead. Now you have less resources. Like, I can't get away. I'm done. Like, I'm out. That way your team can make a better decision. Because if you know that, I don't think you make this call here and go in and try to save him. And then you can save it for LeBlanc or Kha'Zix. Okay, does he actually not die? Because he's okay. Yeah, he should. yeah, two of us die. Uh, three, maybe. He gets... But yeah, if you still have your ult, like, Kha'Zix can't jump in. LeBlanc can't jump forward. And then you guys could probably win that fight. Or at least get out with only one death. I think I even died. Yeah, I died here as well. Because I didn't... Yeah, I didn't know that they had a ward in here. Okay, yeah, just... Be a little more intelligent with your back. Because, like, we saw them even, like, coming on this ward. So, like, you should know that you're... You're the target. Yeah. Like, like, even if you're not the target, she's running straight at you, so she's going to find you. What is Draven by? That's down. Okay, cool.
So you should be getting Dragon Solo experience again and just looming around him. Um, because Draven's the carry, not you. Snake. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, especially, especially, especially with catch-up experience. Because, like, you will gain experience, like, really fast. So if you can create a lot, like, give Draven the experience, then it's just better. That was a pretty good Ari engage. I'm just looking at what's going on. So Draven can't be doing Gromp, because those two seconds could matter. Rakan played that fight really well. Okay, cool. Um, you played that fight really well. Like, see, again, like, you die, right? And that's because you're not tanky. But that's because you're giving your team all this extra gold, and you're doing your function. Er, gold and experience. So that's a good thing. Um, so, like, good, like, like, you did really good there. I really have to practice some more, though. I, 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 oh god, I can't speak. I was missing so many um, Ws, so many knockups in this game. Yeah, but like the ones you have hit have been very impactful. Like that's two really good Rakan engages that you've had, and that's why you pick Rakan. Um, yeah. So, good job on those, and then your team should probably back out now, because if you overstay, they could like I don't know try to cheese rush Baron or something, or um, have pressure on Dragon when it comes up, and you don't get anything by like staying further here. Like this having an extra two hundred health doesn't matter at nineteen minutes. If it's like 35 minutes, yes, that extra 200 health matters a lot. But like the next opportunity that you're going to get to siege this is you've killed them. So it's going to be free either way. Um, so looking further ahead is probably a little better because then you guys are probably going to base and then you lose vision control over um, the objectives. And let's see. Cool. Okay, so this is a team thing. Um, one of you guys should be calling to not be here. Be here. You can literally force this if your con wards this and this. And then don't actually do it, just bait them over here because they have no vision control. Um, I water, but I, I knew there were, were people I almost died there, I think. Oh, okay. I, uh, yeah, I used my Q in there, because if I would have watered there, I was instantly dead, so... Right, I but, like, I would have been dead. if your team's with you, they can't be there. They can't do that. Um, so, like, just, just call your team on that, because you guys can literally just pink... Do you guys have a pink ward? Yeah, you guys no, have a control I ward. I... You guys oh, have two okay. control wards. So, just drop a control ward here and here. And hopefully you have sweeper as well. No sweeper. Okay. If you guys just do this then, you guys have enough vision control to be able to sit in here and bait this. Or just sit in here and bait this. Because you guys got wind dragon, like yipty skit. Like, right? It, it doesn't mean anything. If you guys bait around this, kill three people, you know, then it matters a lot more. Was also good so so far the primary thing has been lane control and i don't think you guys work as a team unit um which will come in time but like the biggest thing i feel like was lane knowledge from this vod so far of like stuff that was like weird or not right because now like it looks like you guys are just running him down you guys are up like 8k gold at 20 minutes so yeah yeah the game the game still feel a little bit like uh, solo queue with boys comps. Okay, so this was uh, we have to... this was really greedy. Um, yeah. <laughs> that that was super greedy. Getting this auto on this turret doesn't matter. Just come here, take this, and then base. Um, I know you're ahead, but like just practice good um, good habits.
I'm actually surprised you guys don't end here. Oh, it's because you're doing that. So if you're hitting the next the the structures the entire time, I'm pretty sure you guys end here. Which could be big, right? Because like if you if you guys die here, like they get barren, and then the game stalls off for another six minutes. Yeah, I think we get barren actually. Yeah, I mean it's not that they do; it's that they could. Okay. Like in in another game type thing. Okay, so super solo queue, like you said. Um, let's see. Okay. So Rakan has two wards. Um, you should be warding over the pet. Because your other wards don't matter right now. So come ward this. Have this controlled. Not control warded, but just have vision here. That way you know if they're trying to do anything. Um, and then when it's low, Rakan can actually just jump over and like stun their Kha'Zix. Yeah. And you guys have to do some timing stuff like that with like, you know, between these two, uh, Lee and Rakan. But you can prevent them from having a chance of 50 50 um, by jumping over and distracting them. And like you can just like jump back with your E. So like. But I think we call to stop damaging Reverend so that if Kha'Zix jumps in, we can kill him, and he actually did it, so... Okay. But so it looked like there was a 50-50 there. Um, yeah, yeah. So... I, I really don't know why I didn't ward there. Yeah. So just for the future. Um, okay, and that's the end of the game. So, do you guys have any questions about, like, the entire game, just stuff that I talked about, etc.? Um, yeah, like, other than... Uh, maybe laning phase and I know I have to still learn lots of warding roaming and uh, overall game knowledge um, if the um, from the team fights that you saw there how did it go like I, I'm not sure if I did that well I mean I hit two good ults there you meant but overall I think overall you did your job um, I think there was less to fix and more to commend in terms of team play or like team fight sorry not team play the team fights, you, you did really good in the team fights. You had multiple knockups. You did a really good job. Um, the, the biggest one was this one where you like over engaged, um, yeah. like like over here. Um, but no, you like you had multiple man knockups. You died for your team. Oh, and I guess this over here, you should have died here. Um, so here and here were the big issues, but this is a result of that. So. Um, I think I mentioned everything else in terms of like warding, but um, yeah. learn general control maps, like I said, and I'll define what that means after I get that away. Um, like how I mentioned that, like if you control this, this, and this, you control the the game. Yeah. Um, you know, like that's important. So look at it like chess, right? Uh, have you ever played chess? Yes. Okay, so look at this as like a square. Look at this as a square. Look at this as a square. You want to control these squares. And if you control those squares, you can try to put them in a check. You know, it, that's how you should be looking at it. Um, okay. And then... Obviously, this, this word here, this word here. And then I think the rest was honestly theoretical. Like, hey, you guys could go here, control ward this, control ward this, and do Baron. And like, you know, that, that changes... Or not do Baron, but bait Baron. That just changes the, the course of the game. So I don't want to get into too many hypotheticals because we could be here for literally four hours talking about hypotheticals. Um, but I think you had more minor mistakes that looked obvious, or like, sorry, that uh, that are obvious to you now based on the things that I said, right? Or were they not obvious? Yeah, yeah, they were obvious. Okay, cool. Um, does that answer your question? Yes, uh, and but I actually have one more. Okay. Um, for the lightning phase. Yeah. Thing. Um, 
when are the um uh, like when is the perfect timing to actually roam or ward okay uh, into the jungle and stuff so like um i think uh just one thing i think i know uh when we push like when we completely push the wave into the turret and then if we then back off i think i have a opportunity to ward but other than that yeah so that's an opportunity um so push and then back off this is one um your second opportunity is if you hold the wave while your AD carry bases, you can then drop a ward after, or you can drop the wave and you come back. Okay. Um, you can ward when you kill them, obviously, or when your jungler is around. So you can literally call your jungler because you're on voice comms and say, hey, I need to ward. Can you come bottom side? That way I can go safely. Okay. And then if you do this, your AD carry just plays accordingly. So instead of playing so far up, then he takes a step back. He just soaks experience and he misses one CS or two CS or three CS and gets the experience but misses the gold. And that ward is worth that missing three CS. Um, you can do it by baiting around this bush. So like if you're in a position of power, you can like sit around here in unwarded territory and then like pretend that you're just sitting here but actually go ward that's assuming that again you're stronger so that's like more this scenario um and then in general in terms of timers when you should be looking to get these well jungle's gonna be ganking around three minutes so you want to get it before three minutes and then oh i'm sorry did you get a screenshot of that do you want that up still yeah i wrote everything down okay cool so i can clear it. um if if the jungler starts bottom side, which you should know in team play by getting the Raptors ward over here, like I mentioned earlier. Like, that is a ward you need to get. Um, then, if he starts bottom side, you should expect the jungler to be back down bottom side around six minutes. Um, th that, is when the bottom, that is when the jungler will be bottom. If the jungler starts top side, you should expect the jungler to be bottom... Um, around three minutes or four minutes depending on the clear of the jungler and how many camps they decide to do next and all that kind of stuff um and then the second rotation would be around eight minutes where it's pretty much open game no matter where they start they could be ganking bottom around this time okay um so you want to pretty much be covering your wards around this time and playing the wave accordingly so that is between you and and um, your trash kid to <laughs> discuss. Um, <laughs> okay. Where okay, how do we want to manage this wave? Because this is a this is a conversation you should literally be having during laning phase. Is you know, hey, I need to ward. Um, let's manage the wave accordingly, because let's say Draven just like pushes the wave like this. Okay, that's fine. Because you can go ward as long as you tell him. That you're going to ward but let's say he's just trying to like create a freeze then like caitlin cues the wave and lulu cues the wave um that's not even english but they cue the wave cue the wave and now you guys lost push and now it's around this critical time now you guys can be three man dove okay. see how that can be an issue now yeah um so you need to be talking about these ward timers and then like your jungler and mid laner they should be doing the same thing you and the jungler you guys should be talking about that um you and the mid laner you guys should be talking about that so the support pretty much controls the flow of conversation usually in a team setting because there were pretty much most of the vision stem, stem out of the mid the mid jungle support so you got you three should be like working in unison to make sure that you guys are covered around these times um and i like you literally might need to make like a sticky note to like put on your screen of like hey these times i need to discuss wards but like during laning phase these are so critical to have these these covered or be playing accordingly to gank pressure um because if you know where the jungler starts you should almost never die in laning phase because of the reasons i outlined earlier right that all made yeah. sense earlier where like this is the side of the map they will be on and if they're not there then you're like getting cheesed and like you shouldn't feel bad about it really because like they took an irregular path and because they took an irregular path that means that you know, if they went like this and like this and like this and bottom, well, guess what? Now your jungler steals their entire top side 
And now the jungler is further behind and they get punished. Even though you get punished, their jungler reciprocally also gets punished. So you see how even if you guys get hurt by the cheese, your team should not really get hurt too much by it because you guys should be taking stuff on the other side of the map then. And I refer to you guys as the team then. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, any other questions then? Uh, yeah, one more question. Yeah. At what time do you win the Raptors early? Um, so you, you have two options. Uh, you're, Let me go to them really quick. Um, this should be discussed like before the game starts, like right, like, like, thirty seconds. Like honestly, even when you're loading into the game, um, you guys could go as this unit like you did right now. But you go more at like forty-five seconds, um, to fifty seconds, and then you go and drop this ward. And usually, you don't. You need two people, not three. Um, usually, it's your mid jungle or your top jungle. Uh, ideally, what would happen is your top is he. I'll literally draw the entire path, the entire map. Because uh, it's pretty important. So this should be your standard setup. Um, your top laner should be here until f uh, 40 seconds. Your mid laner should be here. Literally there. Um, or like slightly, just slightly out of vision range of this turret. So just don't give them that range. Until um, the, entire, the entire thing. So 130. Your... Or no, sorry, that, that is incorrect. My mistake. Until 50 seconds. Be here. Um, and then the support should be here, and the AD carry should be here. So this creates a five-man point. It's called a five-point uh, five because they can't get into your jungle at all because you guys will just walk away. Um, and then once you get this ward... What happens is the support tries to take control of this vision here as everyone else shifts. So I'll draw that in a different color. Um, actually, let me label these. AD, support, mid, and then draw this one. He needs to walk down at like, at 40 seconds. So he should be here around 50 seconds. And then the jungler should just be here in general, so I need to write jungler. Um, that was not what I meant to do. So I'm just going to clearly label this for a screenshot for the entire team um, for clarity. Um, then you guys should be making this rotation here to get this ward around usually 58 seconds to... A minute and five seconds anywhere in here is fine and then while that's happening the support should be trying to control this vision here and try to obtain this bush so obviously the support needs to be careful and it depends on a lot of things but generally you want to try to get that bush that way they can't control that bush or rather control your bush here um, and while they're going there the mid laner should shift over here, and the AD should shift over here. So that's a lot of stuff level one, right? But does that all make sense? Yeah. yeah. And th as you're doing that, you're effectively covering the entire map. So I'll go in another color, because all of this is covered. The only thing you're missing is this. Um, this is covered, this is covered, and this is covered. But nobody's gonna like cheese your top lane. Like, no jungler is going to be like, oh, I'm going to do this. Or, like, you know, the jungler isn't going to, like, sit in the top bush. But the bottom lane could, like, sit in that bush, and that could hurt you a lot. Um, so you, you cover all the zones. Okay. So... Awesome. But one question. Oh. What if, yeah? for some reason, they... I mean, I want it there to be safe for an invade, but what if they decide to invade us uh, with a four-man, like with a five-man squad, and we are split up like that? You just walk away. Okay, I mean, in, in their team comp, they didn't, they don't have a heavy engage, but let's say, for example, they have something like a thresh or something they, they can hook you or... Okay, so then the AD carry position changes from here to here. 
Mm-hmm. Actually, it should be here almost always. So my mistake on that one. It should be there. Um, because what are they gonna do? Flash hook you? Okay, well then you flash. And you should be in enough range that you can. You literally have an entire screen to see them. So as long as you're not AFK, you know you th- like. I got cheesed by exactly what you're saying once, and it was from Camille, who E flashed me, and then yeah. Jin, who started W. Okay, but she E flashed, Jin W'd, and then I got, um, I don't know, like slowed or something. But at this point, I was already dead, and I just saved my flash. But but look what look what they did. They started W, and they did a Camille E flash. So they both started unideally, and it's because I didn't respect them. If you respect that, knowing that this is in your game, you shouldn't die, level one. Um, and, like, look, this is, like, a ridiculous combo. Like, Camille, E-Flash, and a Jin W. Like, what other CC can you name that's literally more than a screen? Yeah. Level one. I, I, I can't name any. Like, you get, like, Nautilus Flash hooked. Okay. And, and if they okay. do that, then you just don't flash, right? But, like, okay. in 90... 90- 8% of cases, like, this is going to be, like, your setup. Like, should be your setup. Assuming you're not invading. If you're invading, well, then it's a whole different discussion about where everyone should be and all that. But yeah. this is, like, pretty much the standard defensive setup. Alternatively, um, your support could ward this like you did and then take this vision early. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that that's pretty much how it should be. Okay, uh, by the way, is that word okay? Because I, I don't know, their team code wasn't that scary, but I was still wanted to be safer and didn't put it in the bush. Is it still okay, or should I put it in the um, bush next time? Yeah, that, that, that's, that's fine. I would drop it here, though, um, okay. in the future. That that ward's probably better. Uh, because you gain nothing out of putting the ward next to the bush, because you see all this vision that just gets cut off. Yeah. So you gain just a little bit more by placing it not like right in front of the bush but like not by much okay cool um any other questions uh i think i had one more wait okay um oh yeah um would it be useful to like time the back recalls when if we push the push the wave and stuff like that that i um, that I recall before my AD carry so I can look for warding and stuff like that, or maybe a potential roam. So that I like, um, that I base like five to 10 seconds before my AD carry. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, the more information you have, the better. Just don't overload yourself. Um, and practice it slowly, obviously. Um, and you don't have to know exactly either. Like, if you see them base at, let's say, 37. You should just assume they'll be there around 40, right? Like, okay. Or sorry, um, 10 of the next minute. Yeah. So, you don't have to know exacts, really. But definitely, it's it's helpful. Okay. Cool. Oh, and then learn learn how long it takes to walk places as a support. Definitely, definitely, definitely. I can give you a map that'll help with that a little bit, but it's not too detailed. It's only a, well, a few paths. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'd be cool. And if you if you want, like, a specific path, literally go into a custom game and test it with, like, the average move speed champion. So just, like, go test it with, like, a 325 base champion. Or, no, that's maybe, like, a 330 base or 325 base. And then just, like, see how long it takes you. Okay. Cool. Anything else? Uh, that's it for me, I think. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Okay. I wrote um, a lot of stuff down. Awesome. So this is pretty much like how VODs will work when I do them with individual players or a group like you guys. Um, focusing on them specifically rather than on the team. Um, yeah. So if any, if any of the teammates have any questions, feel like have them come to me and everything. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end the VOD now. Um, was that genuinely helpful or did I ramble on or like what? Just general feedback. Oh, no. It, it was really helpful. Like... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially for for the next game, I know where to ward, and I think that we can play ways like way more safer without taking too much risks there, and it try not to be that over aggressive anymore. Nice, it's... yeah. So the hard part is like knowing this stuff. 
Because, yeah. like, see, like, look at the map right now. Like, would you have thought of that? Like, if somebody didn't tell you that? I sure as no, hell wouldn't have. Really. So just, like, the, the more stuff you learn like this, the better of a player you become because you just know more. And then you can, like, enact it. Yeah. And, the, like, the hardest part is literally just sitting here and listening. Because we sat here. Um, I was checking timers. For laning phase alone, we spent 45 minutes. And this entire thing is about an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And I two times the video. It's, uh, what, how long? How long of a game? 25 minute game. So yeah, you can see like there's a lot to learn. Even if like you win the game or you think you play perfectly, there's still tons to learn. I know you guys don't think you thought that, but um, yeah. Cool. So if you guys know anything else, um, have a great night, guys. Yeah. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> All right. Um. Uh, oh, what? Do you have anything? No, no, no. It's okay. just nice to have someone to help. Have yeah, of course. With that stuff to improve. Yep. You are welcome. Yeah. So good luck in your next scrim. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you very yeah. much. Don't end, Tyler. One. Um, yeah. So I'll go ahead and turn on my webcam. So, that was a coaching session that I was doing um, with our esports. I thought it went pretty well. Um, if you guys want anything like that, go ahead and join the Discord and go into information, and we can set something up. Um. But that is all I'll be doing now um, for stream because I need to do some work. Um, so I just wanted to throw up the stream that way people wanted to watch because I did think it would be really beneficial to do and to have. Um, I was going to record it either way, but I figured I might as well do it live and just pretty much ignore the chat and all that kind of stuff and take off my webcam, make it look better. So hope that helped. Um, but I'm going to stop streaming, like I said, and... Have a great day slash night, guys. Peace.